colour means different things to different people for various reasons and some people see colour differently to others. There are, in Western culture, some generally accepted terms, even if we hadn't really thought about it before. Colour has influenced our lives for centuries. Ancient Egyptians, Chinese and Indian civilizations believed in the healing power of colour and still do. We still have holistic, alternative therapies that involve colour. The advertising industry knows that red sells, red and yellow sells. It's effective in encouraging impulse buying. Blue or green with white appeals to the careful, budget conscious consumer. Green stands for freshness and environmental friendliness. Let's get back to red. Red is possibly the most powerful colour that there is. If you're angry, you see red. It's exciting. It talks about passion, lust, heat. Red and black are the colours of war. Very closely associated with blood, heart disease, red cross and danger. Yellow is symbolic of friendship and support. Think Daffodil Day. Think Van Gogh's sunflowers that he painted for his hopefully friend Gauguin's room. Didn't work out so well, but that's the way it goes. Um, so it's good and positive. Sunshine Yellow, Tie Yellow River and the Old Oak Tree. It also stands for cowardice and caution. I hope this finds you in the pink. Pink, feminine, caring, nurturing. There's such a thing as drunk tank pink. There's books about it where it keeps aggression down in prisoners. Everything's pink. Are you blue? I'm asking if you're sad. Or are you beyond blue? Picasso was devastated after his friend committed suicide and he took, well, he had a whole blue uh, period there for quite a while. Blue also, calm, cool, trustworthy, conservative, cool, calm and collected. Green is not such an emotional colour. With blue, it's generally calm and peaceful and cool. Um, in your mind's eye, uh, nature, fresh. If you're naive, sometimes you'll be described as green. So again, fresh. In Western culture, white stands for purity and innocence. The power of colour was recognised around about the 1940s uh, with the art movement that started in New York called Colourfield. Colourfield works were huge, heavily saturated colour, which some people have said brought them to tears. Frank Stella was greatly influenced by the work of Joseph Albers. If you're serious about colour like I am, I suggest you look up Joseph Albers. His series, Homage to the Square, was all about colour. Squares are so that there wasn't a subject matter to interfere with how the colour was working. So he studied colour more uh, in depth probably than anybody ever has. His book, The Interaction of Colour, is worth having a look at.